Hi there. Welcome to another virtual create and sip. Uh, my name's Coleman. I'm gonna be your artist tonight, painting along with you. Uh, it's a pleasure having you back uh, and, and painting the swirly trees with me uh, this evening. Uh, this is a really fun painting. It's really great. It's bright and colorful and uh, with it right now being October 1st, we've gotten into the season. Uh, this is fun for making all the colors that those leaves will be changing into. Uh, this is perfect for anyone who's never painted before, so if you have no painting experience, definitely still grab those brushes and paints and paint along with me. Uh, I'll paint through it with you and you shouldn't have any issues with following along and having a great looking painting at the end. Now let's go over our supplies before we get started. A few things that uh, you should have in your painter's kit if you bought that with me is a canvas, uh, which this one, we don't have uh, any sketch on it. This is a pretty uh, abstract kind of painting, so no sketches for it. Um, you will have uh, your paints, and for this painting, we will be using white, yellow, orange, red, blue, green, and black. I haven't included purple in this one because I do like to blend my red and my blue to get a more custom purple color. But if you've got purple and you want to use that, feel free to do so. Uh, some other things that you will need is some brushes, and if you bought our little painter's kit uh, from us here, you should have a set of brushes uh, that we'll be using, and we'll be just using the large, the medium, and then the round pointy brush. So if you've got our kit, you'll have these brushes, as well as a nice little painter's palette with a uh, some wells in there, not all these colors, but your paints will come in uh, this little uh, cup of paint here. So you shouldn't go through all of that with this painting, and if you do, well, get you some more next time. Just set these off to the side. And if you don't have a palette, you can use just a simple paper plate or a styrofoam plate to put and mix your colors on. A few other things that you will need uh, from your home is uh, some extra paper towels. I keep a, a small little roll of them next to my easel. Um, a jar of water to rinse your brushes out in. You may need two of them if you want. One to wet your brush, one to rinse your brush out. That's up to you. And I like to keep a little spritzer bottle. Uh, my other one kind of went out on me and died, so I finished out a mister of hand sanitizer, and now I, I use it with water. Make sure you wash all the alcohol out of it, because it, alcohol can cause some really interesting things that happen to your paint. Um, but it works really well when we mix colors just to pre-moisten that canvas so that our colors blend along really well. And you can also spritz it onto your paints to keep them fresh. So if we've got everything that we need, the last thing, halfway the most important, is our sips. So these chilly evenings now, um, you know, if you've moved on from uh, one beverage to a seasonal one, I've got a little coffee with some uh, spike in it. Cheers to you, and let's get to painting. So to start off with this, I've got my paint set up in uh, the order I'm going to use them. I've got white, yellow, orange, red, blue, green, and then black. Black's going to be the last one. Well, not the last one, but the darkest that we'll use because we've got some little cool little swirly swirls that we can put in through there. Um, one thing that I like to do, I already misted my canvas. I'm going to take my large brush, wet it a little bit and touch it to my paper towel to get some of that excess moisture out of there so I don't have a lot of drips going on. And to get this yellow to stand off uh, the canvas, I'm going to add just a little bit of white to start. So I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of white on one corner and some yellow on the other corner there. So you can see, see there. And I'm going to start in the center here just by making some little swirly strokes with my brush. And we're just going to just mix and blend that in. And because we're going to have some green up around and some orange out through through the corners here, it's okay if you come out beyond that. 
This will all be dried by the time we come back in and add some of those colors. But it's also nice to have some of that yellow in there for mixing our orange. I'm going to add a little bit more and I'm going to come up towards the top. And notice how that yellow gets a little bit brighter. And I apologize if you can't see that too well. The uh, lighting, actually, let me readjust my easel real quick. So as we work along through this, um, it is just me, so I'm not able to respond to any messages or our questions or anything, but if you do feel like you're falling behind, uh, Facebook has a great thing where you can pause and rewind, or if you're watching this with us on YouTube later, uh, you can always pause and rewind and then, and then paint along once you get caught up. So don't be afraid to, to you know, take a step back and a little break every once in a while, get yourself another sip if you need to. I'm going to bring my yellow all the way up to my top here and you can paint along the sides, the edges of your painting too if you want. These are This is a gallery wrapped canvas which means the staples are on the back, not on the sides. So you can actually paint the edges as you go if you like or you can come back in and paint them a solid color at the end. So it's not going to take a lot of paint for this painting here of the different colors. I'm just going to mix that yellow around. I'm going to bring that down a little bit close, farther into the center. And then without rinsing my brush, this is one thing that's kind of nice with this uh, painting too, is as you progress through those colors, you don't have to worry about, you know, rinsing your brush every time. Unless you've got like a whole bunch of yellow in there or something, um, you don't have to. So I'm now going to take a little bit of orange. And I'm going to start off here to the side and I'm going to swirl that in. I'm going to gradually bring that in to my yellow. And I'm just making circular strokes with my brush using that large one and just working around. Now, one thing you want to be cautious of is not eating up too much of your yellow in through there. You want to save some of that so you can see it when you're done. And bring that up around the edge too. And around this side. And grab just a little bit more and continue working down. So in the same process that we went from the yellow into the orange, we're going to gradually move down the side, down the left hand side of our canvas there. We're going to let that overlap and if that yellow has started to dry, you won't get quite as much blending, which is nice. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit farther than what I want it so that I can then blend some red in so that that sits on top of our mixes with my orange mix a really nice transition. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit more, get that edge. Kind of hard for me to see that edge. I don't like to step in front of this camera here. Uh, it changes the focus on it, I've noticed. And I've still got the orange in my brush. I'm now gonna take a little bit of red it's always best to, take, to grab a little bit. You can always add more. Better than having a whole bunch of paint on your brush and then not knowing what to do with it all. So now I'm just going to bring that up into my orange. That mix is really, really nice. And pretty much any shades of yellows, reds, oranges, blues, greens, purples that you've got should work. Sometimes you can get some paints that don't quite blend the best together. But this is really good for, you know, just practicing, get to know paints and your brushes. A lot of it is, is understanding how to use your brush. Uh, you can get a lot of really cool effects just by knowing the things that your brush can do for you. 
So I've got a lot of that orange already worked out of my brush and I'm just straight red. And I'm gonna work my way around this bottom left hand corner. And in the same way that we blended our yellow and our orange, and then our orange into red, I'm gonna bring more of that red out than what I want so that I've got that then to blend my blue in to create that purple. So I'm gonna bring that around. And I'm overlapping a bit of my yellow up here through the top. Some kind of a little spiral-like effect that goes around. And if you feel like that paint isn't quite moving across the canvas as easily as it was before, then maybe grab just a little bit of extra water on your brush. You don't want too much. You'll get some drips that'll happen in through there. And sometimes those can look really cool. And if you get that to happen, then you know, don't don't freak out. And uh, you know, maybe take a step back, see how it looks. If you think it looks really cool, well, maybe continue doing it. If you don't think it's cool, well, try not to keep doing it. Okay, so I've got my red brought out through here, and I'm not rinsing my my the red off my brush. I am going to now grab just a little bit of, uh, this is the thalo blue that I've got, and I'm going to grab just a little bit of white. So I've got just a little bit of white on one corner, a little bit of blue on, on the other corner, and I'm just going to start mixing that right at that transition zone. You can see how that red and that blue start mixing to create a purple, and that white helps to tint that down so it's not going from a red into like an ultra dark purple. And if you need, you can grab a little bit of red and a little bit of blue and a little bit of white all on your brush at the same time. And then just mix right on your canvas. So it's easier to add more of a color right on the canvas than it is if you're mixing it up in your palette there. Sometimes you can grab way more paint and mix more than what you uh, really need. And then you're stuck with a, a bunch of one shade and then you've exhausted all of your paints to use to blend and then you gotta put some more in your palette. So mix a little bit and then add some more. All right, so that purple's looking really nice. I'm gonna start grabbing just a little bit more blue and work just some more straight blue in through there. Mm -hmm. Maybe add a little bit more red. I don't wanna don't wanna go to too blue too fast. So I'm gonna pick up more red. Start mixing that on that right hand side of where my red purple go. Red violet. There we go. Yeah. and right along through there. So sometimes, as you may have noticed, I'm not painting my bottom edge. But what I can do is show you at the end how to paint those edges without going over the top, the front. So I, I like at times to, to create a black edge uh, around my painting uh, if I'm not wrapping that, that paint around the sides. And what that does for you is it helps to make your painting look just more finished and ready to hang on the wall. And you don't have to worry so much about getting a, uh, a frame for it. It just frames itself. So one thing that's really great about the gallery wrapped canvases. So I am just straight blue now on my brush. I'm bringing that down. Now if you come in and you start taking up too much of that purple, you know, always grab just a little bit more red. I'm going to grab a little bit right here. And blend that down in there a little bit more. That nice deep purple. And then work my blue on up. 
And if at any time you feel like you've got too much of your previous color, you can always wipe that right off onto your can uh, to your uh, paper towel there. That way you don't have to worry about wrenching your brush. Just having a little bit really helps with that transitions and blending. So if you've got only your primaries, your yellow, red, and blue, you can still make this painting. You just got to blend them on the canvas as you go. And you'll get some really great colors uh, as you do, and you'll learn uh, all about paint blending. And if you have some things happen and you're not exactly excited about it, we'll just let it dry and you can paint back over it. You know, or uh, you know, if you're really not happy, you, know, you can always get a little bit of gesso re-gesso your, your canvas and then start fresh. Just because you have something happen on your painting doesn't mean that it can't necessarily be fixed or painted over. And as artists we learn to find creative solutions for a lot of things. So I'm going to wipe off some of this blue before I get into my green. And then grab some of that, and I'm going to start right above where I finished out my blue. Because I still have a little bit of blue left in my brush, so that'll help to blend right there at that transition zone. And bring some of that out. Now again, we don't want to get too far into our yellow. We're going to bring that green on up and around, and then I'll eventually start adding some yellow so that it blends into our yellow there at the top. And just little circles with the brush. I'm just using the tips of the bristles to make these little swirly strokes, just little circles, round and round. Exhaust some of that green out of my brush. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of yellow. Yeah, there we go. And start blending that in. A little bit more yellow there. Very nice. And come down around this edge here. And it also looks like as this comes out from around, as it it maybe moves away from the yellow. I don't want to come in too close to my orange. Just a little bit up here at the top, maybe. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna rinse out my large brush. And good brush maintenance is to make sure your brushes are clean before setting them out to the side. You definitely don't want to set your brush with uh, paint still in it. Then you want to be pretty gentle as you rinse your brush out. As long as you get the majority of your paint out, you can then let it set and then come back in and give it a better cleaning uh, once we're done painting. So I'm going to set that brush to the side and we're going to let things dry here. Now if you are still painting on some of your colors uh, in through here, you, know, you can press pause now and, and paint along until you get caught up and then press play again and you'll be right back where we are all now. Uh, so as this dries, and if you want to work quickly through this painting, you can speed dry this painting, and then uh, with a, a blow dryer or setting it in front of a fan, and uh, get that paint to dry. Acrylic paints are really great because they do dry fairly quickly, and then they are also easy to wipe off the canvas while they're still wet. So if you uh, pick up a color you didn't mean to, put a brush stroke someplace you didn't want it, you can always take a wet paper towel, or if your towel is, is wet from your wiping your brush off, just quickly wipe that right off your canvas. You don't have to commit to it if you don't want to. It's when you sit and you wait for it to dry that then you have to then find some other creative solutions to be able to paint over the top of that. So once this dries, the next thing that I'm gonna be using is my medium brush and, uh, and black. So we'll be painting in our little swirly tree limbs in through here. So I see some wet paint in on mine. I think I'm gonna run over to my drying system real quick and give that a quick dry. So I'll be right back.
All right, so I've got my canvas dried here, and you'll definitely be able to tell if your paint is still wet if you look at it from an edge and you see a little shiny spot on there is probably still wet, and if you touch it and you get paint on your finger, it's most definitely likely still wet. And as I said, I'm gonna take my, my medium brush here, uh, and I'm gonna, again, pre-wet the bristles on it, wipe some of that off on my paper towel, and when it comes to making the swirly tree, um, as you can see on the example there on the left hand side, uh, it's just really fun and, and swirly and curly and you can decorate it and design it in any way that you want. And uh, you know, this is your painting so you can change it in any way that you like. Uh, I will tell you a couple different ways on how I like to paint trees. And one way is, so you, you're, you're Medium brush should be flat, and you'll have a narrow edge as well as a wider edge. You can start down in your bottom right, or if you want to change it over and start from the, the left over. I'm going to use the narrow edge to start with my line that comes up. And I like to come right across all of my colors, and I can even make my little first swirl. So it's kind of fuzzy, as you can tell, uh, on there, but I'm not too worried about that because we can come back in and touch a lot of that up once we get our basic lines in through there. So for me, it's actually kind of difficult to pull up as I make these lines. And since our canvas is not nailed down to our easel, I rotate it. That way I pull my edges down. It's just a little bit easier for me. And the base of it is going to be thicker than the ends. And don't worry too much about trying to create those tapers as you're painting. Uh, now you can always come back in and do that with your, uh, your liner brush, your little small round pointy one. And you can also with some of these colorful little swirls that you can kind of see in through our example there. Cover up some of those little spots if you want to, need to. And I'm going to just add a little bit more there. And you can have these swirls come off anywhere you want, and they can branch off in all sorts of different directions. They can curl to the left, they can curl to the right. And you don't have to try and do the curl all in one fatal swoop. So if it's come up here, and actually even come back around and just do to where you're always pulling, not pushing those around. Come off this one here. Just like that. And you can have as many or as few curly branches on this tree as you want. You can have them go right off the edge if you like. And if you're painting your edges, you can bring that around and then have it come back out onto the canvas. Just like that. So have fun with this. You can do all sorts of things. You're only limited by your own creativity. And again, if you don't like it, wipe it off. This black will still wipe off fairly easily. You might have to add a little bit of color underneath. And as you're painting along, you usually like to say, take a break every once in a while, take a step back from your painting, see how it's looking from a distance. We don't tend to notice some of those little small details and mistakes or slightly happy, unhappy accidents. It can happen. So don't don't be too mean to yourself about your painting abilities. Especially if you haven't painted in a long time. I always feel bad for the folks who, you know, all it took was like that third grade art teacher to say, that's not what a cloud looks like. And that really ruins a kid's uh, confidence, you know, but I've been outside, I've looked at clouds, and I've seen them of all sorts of shapes and sizes and 
looking like elephants and giraffes and dogs and, you know, any, anything you can imagine. And that's where art and painting is fun, because if you can imagine it, you can bring it to life and make it real on your canvas. Another fun thing you can do with this swirly tree is you can hide your initials into it if you want to. Very strategically place little curls in through there. No, anything you like. You may flip that around and hit some of those edges. Through. Make this one nice and big. Maybe grab a little bit of water on my brush. Really helps that paint to flow off your bristles a little bit easier. Yeah, just like that. There we go. Again, if you get little little bits that, uh, let me see if I can get in here close on that, that you know, don't really look that great on the edges, you know, a little fuzzy or anything like that, don't, don't worry too much about that. Again, we can come back in with another brush and fix some of those things. And we come back over them and make them darker. And the one key is to just not make some of these ends really, really thick. You don't want them any thicker than what your base is there. And you can always come down in and thicken up some of those as you come back up. Just keep adding little swirls and curls. Until we're happy with it. Again, taking step backs every once in a while. See how it looks. Sometimes the hardest part is the knowing when to say when. So it's very easy to go a little too far sometimes and either add too much or try and touch a spot up. Because up close you notice something, from a distance you didn't notice it, but you still wanted to try and fix it. And that's where some incidents can happen that help to teach us creative problem solving. get some of these tiny ones here. I'm just twisting that brush in between my fingers. I'm about to a point where I'll be going to my small brush. And you can rotate that canvas around as many times or any way you want. Turn it on its side to get to some of those edges. You don't have to leave it standing straight up, paint everything, and then get frustrated when your hand or arm just doesn't want to move in a way that to continue making those lines. Flip that around, rotate it as you need. And if you're working on the table, you can spin that around get to those edges. Just be cautious not to uh, drag your hand through any wet paint and then set it down someplace else. And if you do, well, you can tell everyone that you did that intentionally. One of the things we can do as artists is say that whatever happens was done intentionally. And a lot of times all of Prima, which is just doing it in the moment, just knocking it out in one setting. You know, some of those things, you get more comfortable with, with dealing with those things. Just be loose and have some fun with that. You got a little heart shape going on in there. And you can 
definitely make that happen if you're making this for someone you like a lot. And if you like yourself a lot, you're making it for you, still have a little heart in there. Uh, I hope you can hear that on through your video, the sounds of the bristles against the canvas. I just love that, love that sound. Let's see, I'm gonna make one right here. Just a bit over that yellow, get some great contrast off of that. Tiny guy right there. Yeah, maybe one right there. Not quite a full curl. Yeah, just like that. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna make one here. Again, you can put these anywhere you want. Get that around, see how it's all looking. Quick step back. Coming along really nice. As I come through, I'm going over some spots and redepositing some color. You don't want to get too crazy with it and end up making those branches super thick. So do be cautious of that. But if they do end up getting thicker, you can say that those brushes are those branches are just closer to you. Because that which is farther away will appear smaller and that which is closer may appear larger. I like the look of having those go off the canvas and then come back around. And yeah, I think at this point I'm going to go to my small round brush. Liner brush. I'm going to rinse out my medium brush first. Wipe that off on my paper towel. You definitely don't want to take a paper towel and try and pull on your bristles. Those will pull them out of the ferrule or break them off. And the ferrule is the little metal part of your brush there. So it holds all the bristles in and holds it to your handle. And I've got that guy rinsed out, but I will be washing it much, much better when I get done. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we do get to the end. So when it comes to using my little liner brush, you wanna you wanna try and keep that you know like a, a very fine find my camera in there uh, point. And using a little bit of water helps that out. And I like to take a little bit of water in that well or right next to my black so I can grab some of that and mix it in through there. And you don't want it to like drippy drippy paint. You just thin it down a little bit so that it almost like an ink like consistency. Now I didn't make a whole lot there as you can see. So I mix all my black with a little bit of water. 
and then trying to keep all the paint just right at the tip of my bristles. You don't want to fully load your brush all the way down to the ferrule because that'll end up causing that paint to impact down there and compact and then that's what will make those bristles splay out and then you won't have such a fine point anymore. And come in and I can start touching up some of these branches. Sounds like my cats are nearby, so we may get a surprise appearance from them. And I like to keep, use my pinky as a kickstand sometimes to hold my hand steady. Do be cautious of any wet paint that you've got so that you don't end up setting your pinky in some paint and then putting that down someplace you didn't want to. I'm just going to go around and I'm going to tighten up some of those edges. I'm going to mix a little bit more water and a little bit more black together. I'll just grab just a little drip of water there. Add some really thin, smaller uh, swirls into your tree branches. So this one's closer to the bottom and maybe just a little bit closer to us, the viewers, or make it just a little bit thicker. Not because I accidentally made it thick and I don't want to have to come back. It's intentional. I did it on purpose. Accidentally on purpose. That's okay. If anyone asks, I say, oh yeah, doesn't it look like it's coming at you? And then you can also set your red velvet rope up however far back from your painting as you want. So the people don't get a chance to get up and get nitpicky on your artwork. It also gives you an opportunity to invite them to come and paint along with you the next time and see how theirs turns out. And I hope yours is looking really good right now. I'll just keep working on these branches. Tighten them up. Almost dipped my brush in my coffee. That happens sometimes, just be cautious of it yourself. It happens to the best of us. And it's something that a lot of times you just continue doing for days and days, years and years, it's just there's a cup there, I just want to put my brush in it. Oh yeah, that was my beverage. But if you're not using a toxic paint, like an oil paint or something, these acrylic paints are, uh, for the most part, non-toxic in very small amounts. So, I mean, you wouldn't want to scrape it out of your little cup and eat it like you used to do the glue. Paste is what kids used to eat. I went to school with a kid that was a paste eater. We also ate a lot more things, but we won't talk about all that. Again, as you're painting these in and touching those up, if you need to rotate that canvas around, you know, feel free to do so. Don't think because I'm holding it one way that you've got to hold it that way. Even the way everyone holds a brush is going to be a little bit different. So if you're just getting started, go experiment. Play around with those. See what feels best to you. Develop your own style and way of doing things. 
And if anyone says, hey, that's not the way you do that, you'd be like, that's not the way you do that. It's the way I do. And being an artist too, if you want to change your mind on how you do things, you can. It's your art, your paintings, your expression. Make it yours. You know, just as easy as we can change our ideas on how we feel about something, we can change our ways on how we feel about the way we paint. Making marks on canvas with shapes and colors. I'm just grabbing little bits of water. I'm still tapping it off on my paper towel to get, you know, some excess off of there. I don't want to come at it with a great big huge amount of water and then have to deal with that. And just continue touching up these swirls. I'm going to flip this on around. Trying to use just the tips of the bristles to lay that down. Not laying down the full length of the bristles to make these marks. It's like using a sharp pencil to make a line. I mean, unless you're shading something in with a pencil, you don't normally use the sides of the graphite. Use the point. And that little liner brush is best if you do it like that. And then it'll keep it looking good for years to come. It is definitely the one brush you want to take the most care of. Because once you lose that sharp point on there, it's really hard to get it to come back. You can clean your brush and then use a, a, a brush shaper or a conditioner to help keep your brushes looking brand new. And there's a couple of uh, recipes you can find online on YouTube and such to make your own. So if you're really getting into painting and you want those brushes to last you for a long time. I'll make some of that or get you some. And just make sure you take really good care of your brushes. Okay, so I'm going to add any more in here. Let me add one right here. Fill in this little spot. I'm being really careful not to put my finger down where I've got wet paint. So right there, I got a little bristle that decided to go a little, a little stray. We'll work through that. We'll make that as a, another little bit that comes right off the side there. Again, I almost put it in my coffee. I've got it in a completely different spot. Fantastic. I think that looks really good. I haven't covered up too much of my colors. These swirls. Let me add another one right there just to just a little guy. I said it's really hard to know when to say when. You can just really get into it and have a lot of fun. Take a pause every once in a while. See how that looks from a distance. And then come back in and add to it if you want to need to. So 
I think I'm going to call that good. I'm going to give them a liner brush, a little quick wash. And wipe that excess water off on my paper towel. And as you wipe that off, you can spin that brush as you come across there. And that'll help to bring all those bristles back to a good point. So again, real quick, I'm going to run over to the uh, drying station to give this a quick dry so that when I add my little colorful swirls on there, I don't have to worry about any black paint still being wet and picking that up and muddying up those colors. So we're going to introduce some of these colors that we have in this corner, over in here, and vice versa so we can get that nice contrast of color. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually went and brought the dryer into this room that I'm painting in um, so I could quickly dry it and not have to step away for too much. But if you're drying yours still or you're still adding some swirls onto your, your tree, I'm going to let you work on that. I'm grab a sip here. I'm just going to give my paints a quick little misting. And then we'll be using that little small liner brush for uh, for our swirls. Now, if you can see in our example over here, we've got some some light purple down in the bottom, and we've got some blues up in the the orange. And so you can use some of those contrasting colors. And basically, what we've done is we've created a little bit of a color wheel here, or a color spiral, swirly color wheel. And so. At times, you know, yellow doesn't like to mix in with purple too well. But boy, you sit a little yellow on top of purple. You get some great contrast that happens. And just a little bit really makes it pop sometimes. So we're going to play around with that. I like to add a little bit of white in with these colors as we go. That way, that white acts as, uh, some, uh, as a primer to uh, set those paints on top of those colors. And I'm going to start with some yellow. I'm going to work my way back around my color uh, wheel here, my, my palette of colors, and add those as I, as I go around. So you can kind of work those back and forth as you want, or you can go the opposite direction of everything. So you could go yellow, orange, red, purple, green as you go around, and just put in some little fun swirls. You don't have to make them perfect circles or multiple big spirals or anything. Make them small or as big as you like. Just a couple little accents through there. Bring one up here on my lip. You 
These are kind of maybe some leaves. The leaves were, you know, just swirls falling off of uh, this tree. And in the same fashion as we mixed everything around, I'm not really rinsing my brush out as I, as I go in to add more of these other shades. So I've got the, the little bit of yellow and, and right next to it, a little bit of orange. And then just work my way around my canvas. Again, you can rotate that canvas if you need. And have them big swirls, little swirls, bigger again, some of those bigger ones are maybe closer to you. Some of the smaller ones are further back. You can just play with that idea as you paint these in. They don't have to be attached to the tree. They can sit freely apart from it. Grab a little bit more yellow, maybe a little white, make kind of a peachy color. Throw some of that down in here on top of that purple. With that black dry, those paints should sit right on top of that surface and get some great contrast on those lighter colors against that, that stark black. We're just going to work our way around. A little bit right here. And if you do end up putting some colors where you already have those colors, you know, like a little, a little orange up through there, it's not going to show up that well. But you can still play with that if you like. Knock some of that color off, and I'm going to start working into more of my red. Grab a little red, a little orange, a little white. And mix that. And again, I'm not mixing great big huge amounts. I'm going to be able to grab a little bit uh, at a time as I mix. I can always grab a little bit more if I need. That's like a nice rich poppy red. A little orangish kind of color. And wipe some of that extra off. I just want to start working towards more of that red as I make my way through the green and into yellow. You can have as much fun as you can with this. You know, lots of little swirls. Not very many if you don't want your painting. You can make it the way you want it. I'm going to add a little bit of that orange right up in through here. Yeah. Very nice. And like mirrors that. Not mirrors it, but replicates that swirl behind it. It's a nice little rhythm pattern of swirls as you work your way around. And I've got that little bit of red right next to my blue there, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of blue. I'm going to make some purple. I don't want to go with the deepest, darkest purple too fast, but you know, while I've got it there, I'm going to make a little bit because that'll stand up against that yellow really nice. In fact, it may even be so close to looking like the black, but you want to be careful with that. And then I'll add a little bit of white to tint that out and get it towards like a lilac kind of shade of color. that in. Yeah, very nice. You can just play with making all sorts of shades of color. 
It's a great uh, painting for practicing blending. And if you're taking painting lessons, you know, they'll have you break it all up into squares and, and play with that to, to get your, your color spectrum going on. But I say why not find a way to make it fun? Still the same process of blending and mixing colors to get some of this, so. Oh yeah, I love that lilac color. And that's just a little bit of red and some blue and some white. And if you're painting your edges, you can bring that all the way around too. You know, have that come off the edge and then pop back around. Again, I'll sh at the end, I'll show you how to paint those edges a solid color. I'm going to do mine in black. Black does a really good job of just framing that painting. And I am about to where I am using just straight blue. Again, it's, it's kind of dark like that dark purple was that I made. I might add a little bit of white into it. Create a nice little light blue. You can add as much white, a little bit of white, and gradually add more. Change up those variations of blue. If you end up looking back, you're like, oh, I have them all going the same way. I wanted to change directions. Don't worry about it now. You can always paint this again and do it another way. You can come back in and add a few others that do go the other direction. Sometimes it's easy to get caught in a pattern. Why don't you take a moment every once in a while, step back, see what you got going on, and catch yourself on those. Oh, that blue on that yellow looks really good. Really dark though, but that's okay, I like that. I'm going to add some white, make a really light blue. Add that in before I start working my way down into the green. That just stands off really nice. On that black and dark blue, you have to see it against the purple. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of add a couple little blue swirls all over right now while I've got it on my brush. Just one or two here or there. water on my brush rinse that off some I still got the blue on there because you know yellow and blue make green so as I work down into my green and just mix those colors right on my palette I'll let them mix in my brush as I lay those colors in you can even grab some green and some blue, or some green and some yellow, change that up. This green and yellow makes a really nice vibrant, kind of almost um, like Dago kind of green, where it's a kind of a fluorescent look. Little bit of water again to help to thin that down some. And grab a little bit of white too. Maybe make a 
bit of a chartreuse type color. You can just gradually move from a dark green to a super light green. I'm still letting some of that color shine through my background there. Just a little bit, it's okay if it does. Didn't have to be just a solid, solid color. Real one right here. I'm gonna add a little more yellow. So as I work my way back in to what my purple background where I started off with yellow, I'll move that color around in a nice gradation. A little bit of white to it if you want to need to. Tint that up, make it brighter. Still got enough green in there that I'm getting a greenish tint and that'll exhaust out. Eventually I'll come out of your brush and then you'll just be have a pure color. If you need to, give it a quick rinse. Wipe that off on your paper towel. And then dive back into those colors. So I'm going to pull a little white out next to my yellow and get a nice bright yellow there. Yeah. And put a few of these guys in there. Let's see, I want to maybe add some yellow up in through here. Maybe some in on my blue. Just kind of scatter those around where they'll show up. Nice swirly one right there. Maybe one more right here. Mm, one more right here. Just a little guy. That area was looking kind of lonely of swirls. Fantastic. So when you get to a point where you think you've got enough little colorful swirls all in through there, well then step back, let it dry. What I'm going to do next is to show you how to paint those edges. So to paint the, the edges, what I use is my large brush. You can use your medium brush if you feel more confident with that. But the trick is to uh, make sure that the way that you have the bristles against the canvas doesn't allow some of those to dip out over the front. So as you can kind of see as I bring this in closer, you know, if you brush across like this, you get some of those bristles that dip out over the front. You know, if you brush across like so, you'll end up just piling up that paint across that edge right there. So I like to run that across sideways. So you can't really see the tip of my brush there. I'm gonna hold it down like that, yeah. Um, but across the side this way. That way you can get right up close to that edge and across the back, but not have to worry about getting any paint on the front. So again, I'm using just black. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water on my brush. And I'm gonna start with my bottom edge. 
And because this is a gallery wrap canvas, I can actually hold on to the back of it as I paint my edge. And just be careful not to get paint on your on your arm as you paint along. And then I'm just going to bring that paint right across the edge. That's the side there. And I'm going to work my way right up close to the front. I'm going to try my best not to get any over the front there. Onto my painting, you get a little bit, it's all right. You just don't want a lot. And create kind of a crisp line right across that edge. Get too much water on there and it'll come on thin. You may have to worry about it maybe dripping over the front there. And then when I go to then turn my canvas, what I'm gonna do is Still hold it there, use my thumb to find kind of about the center, and just let it rotate, balance it on my thumb, move my hand in there to grab that other edge. And this is where you want to be cautious of and touching that paint that you just laid down onto your forearm as you paint around. And we're just going to continue like that over all four edges. Now, if you've been painting, your edges as we've been going, you shouldn't have to worry about this step. And sometimes as I'm painting, I'll start uh, painting my, it, my edges as I go to wrap that image around. And then I get so into it that I kind of forget sometimes. And it's not too hard to add those colors back around if you need, if you want to. You can bring the, the yellows and the oranges and the greens and the blues right around the side. It's okay if it doesn't perfectly match up with everything. You know, on the different blends and where you've got it blended, as long as it looks like those colors belong there, it will look all right. And if someone spends a lot of time looking at the edges of your painting and not at what you painted, well, I don't know why they would be too concerned with your edges like that in. Their focus is not on what you did, but what, you know, that those edges. Bring just a little bit of touch up. It does help it out, makes it look finished. And across the edge there. And then the last side here. Come up across that front corner. And it's with the hopes, I started with the bottom, with the hopes that that bottom edge would be fairly dry by the time I got all the way around. And if it's not dry, one thing you want to be cautious of is then setting it back down in the bottom of your, your easel there, if you're using an easel. Because that wet paint can stick to uh, that little trough down there. And then as that paint dries, it can actually kind of glue itself to your easel. And then when you peel it up, you can pull either the paint and sometimes even the canvas off of your off of your painting. So I've got all my edges painted. I'm going to rinse that brush off. And since that is still a little wet on the bottom, what I can do because my easel has uh, this little thing on the top is you can hang it off of the top of the easel that way. If it fits and you're able to, you can hang it off the bottom, you know, the long way, whichever. Oop, I got paint on myself. Or if you've got your blow dryer, you can give that a quick dry. My bottom edge is pretty well dry enough to set that on there. 
And then the next step is to put your name on it. Um, you can use your little liner brush if you feel confident in using that, or you can use a Sharpie marker. A lot of times I'll just use a Sharpie. Uh, I feel like I've got more control uh, with that, that rather than I do my liner brush, but I don't have a Sharpie on me right now. So I'm going to just put my initials in with a little liner brush. And you can sign any way you want. First name, last name, initials. I like to put the year on mine so when I look back I can look at my progress on how I've gone through there. And when you're done and uh, you are ready to wash your brushes, one way that you can take care of those brushes and make them clean and uh, ensure that they'll stay in their proper shape, I use uh, blue dish soap. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put a little bit in the palm of my hand, add some warm water, and then I'll just swirl that brush in my hand. And those suds will change color if you've got paint left in your brush. And you just kind of work that out until you get just clear water, clear suds that are made through that, uh, through there. And then you can, once you get it all rinsed, you can just gently pull the bristles back into shape and then set those off to the side. You definitely don't want to make you want to make sure that you get the brush down out of everything that's down towards the bottom. That way it doesn't build up and cause those bristles to uh, splay out and, and give you issues later on. Uh, at times when I use a brush and I've used a lot of paint and I know that I may have some extra paint in there, you can use one of those little green scrubbies and you can kind of gently work back and forth through there and that abrasiveness of that scrubby can pull some of that paint out to help you out. So that's how you keep your brushes and if you've got some of that uh, brush conditioner or shaper or you've made your own, you can then add a little coat on that and on, on your brushes and pull it to, to its shape and then leave that to dry. So if you've ever come across a brush that feels kind of uh, stiff, uh, it's usually got that condition. A lot of your new brushes, uh, they've got that feel to them, and as you put it in water uh, and it dissolves that conditioner out of it, it then loosens it up. So, uh, so I do hope that helps you out and helps to keep your brushes uh, fresh and uh, looking brand new so that you can paint with them uh, for, for months and years uh, to come. And uh, when you, yeah, when you need new brushes, you'll definitely know. And it's fun to watch how when you use a brush a lot that you can wear down certain edges of it uh, quicker than, than uh, other edges. So uh, show those brushes off after uh, lots of use. But definitely share your painting with us. Uh, when you get your painting finished, I'd love to see some pictures and share it with us on our Facebook or Instagram. And, uh, and or tag us in on, on your Instagram or Facebook or wherever you post photos. But I hope you had a lot of fun painting Swirly Tree with me tonight. I had a lot of fun painting along with you. And join us for our uh, next virtual Create and Sip. Um, we'll have uh, our calendar up on our website, uh, which you can see down at the bottom of the screen, uh, our, our pages and our Facebooks and our in Instagrams that you can uh, follow us uh, through. Uh, but you can find all of our upcoming virtual Create and Sips that we've got planned. Order your kit so you'll have everything shipped to you and ready to paint. And you can join us live once again. So have a wonderful night. Stay safe out there. And I can't wait to paint with you again. Bye-bye.